praise the Lord for this opportunity to share with you the living word of God. My name is Charlie, and we're going to talk about sovereignty. Is God sovereign or is not God sovereign? That's what the issue is. And we, we're going to go back a little bit from last week's messages, and I'm going to just run through them real quick if I can. For the, by grace ye are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift. Salvation is a gift. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Not of works. Even when we were dead in sins, have quickened. That word quickened in the King James means made alive. Together with Christ, by grace ye are saved. For the grace of God bringing salvation have appeared to all men. All of us know that we need to be saved. If we died right now, we know we'd be lost. You know that already. You might be trying to forget it, but you know it already. And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? This is in Acts 16 and 30. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also the sins of the whole world. Everybody is saved, but not everybody has received it. Now, that they going to really be in trouble. And when he comes, he will prove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they believe not on me, speaking of Jesus. For there is no respect of persons with God. Everybody can be saved. God is, is Jesus said, if you come unto me and in no wise will I turn you away. So we got to remember that and accept what he said because we will answer to all of these questions someday. Don't think that you're going to die and waste away. You're not. As a matter of fact, you're going to wake up when you die. You're going to wake up in the spirit world, unfortunately. And the question is, will you be in heaven or hell? And you're going to be in one or the other because you can't live on this earth without a birth certificate. And when you die, they give you a death certificate. So remember these things. The New International Diversion, NIV, popularized the term sovereignty. In 288 verses, they substitute the phrase, the phrase sovereignty Lord, where it's translated Lord God or our Lord God Almighty in the King James Version and others. So we, well, that is the difference between many of our translations. None of them are authentic. None of them, if it's not Hebrew or Greek, it's not authentic. That's not what God said. It's what God said in their versions. We'll put it like that. Okay, Hebrews 2.14. Destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. You know, many times people die and they said, the Lord took her. Well, what do the Lord want to take you for? God don't want you to die. God don't want anything bad to happen to you. When God created Adam, he made him to live forever. Forever. Forever is a long time. We get excited about the 938 years that he lived, lived. But Methuselah lived 968 years. But no man has lived to get 1,000 years old. That ain't but one day with the Lord. So we got a long way to go in eternity. Satan is the one that go about seeking whom he may devour. 1 Peter 5 and 8. He is the one that kills. When you die, it won't be God that killed you. It will be Satan that killed you. He is the one who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. John 10 and 10. God told us not to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Because in the day that you eat thereof, we would surely die. That's what he told our poor parents, Adam and Eve. Don't eat of that tree. Genesis 2, 17. We brought death into this life. We started old age, deterioration, sickness, and disease. God isn't the one that controls whether we become ill or not. We started the corruption of this planet. God doesn't control all of those things. Now, let me share with you how Satan got in control of this. When he, when he deceived Adam and Eve, they were the gods of this world. And that's how he got the title. Satan is now the god of this world. And that's the reason this subject is, is God's sovereignty. Or is he 
how can I say it? Is he the one that's doing everything? He's not. Because even when we have a tornado, we say it was caused by God. Your insurance company to tell you that. That's a God thing. It's not. It's Satan. Because Adam had control over all these elements that we deal with now. The hell and all these things. It was Satan that does those things, not God. And when a man dies, it's not God that kills him. It is Satan that kills, steals, and destroys. That is the, the Bible. And the very first church, okay, that was established, they didn't know all these things. That's the reason God called a man by the name of Paul and had the revelation revealed to us because Paul studied on a man by the name of Gamaliel who taught Judaism and et cetera, et cetera. But we glad he did because God really blessed this man. John eight thirty two, Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It's the truth that you practice that will make you free. <coughs> you know, I, I, I came up with a lot of people that were drug addicts, et cetera, et cetera, alcoholics, all these things. But when they came to the Lord, they still struggled with these things. And I'm not going to say that if you're a Christian, you're not struggling with it. You might be struggling with it, but don't get sidetracked. Just confess, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Even when you commit that sin, say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And pretty soon your body will catch up with what you're saying. You can talk to your body. That's what God tells us to do. We will create in an image and likeness of God, and everything you see and things you cannot see was created with words because we're created in his image so we can practice these things. God is sovereign. Nothing can happen but when he allows it. But it's not the truth. It's knowing the truth that will make you free. It's knowing of the truth, and that's faith. When you know the truth, that's faith. Uh, there was a word I wanted to use, but I can't think of it right now, but the Lord will bring it back up. If God were guilty of everything he, bl he blamed for the day, there isn't a civilization that nation on the face of the earth that would persecute, that wouldn't persecute, persecute and execute him if he was a physical being. God is not physical. God is spirit. Every enemy that we got is a spirit. Even the Lord himself, who is our righteousness, is a spirit. God became a man and dwelt among us. God needed to know what it felt like to be a man. So he became a man and dwelt among us. Acts of God. The truth is God is being misrepresented, lied about, and blamed for things that aren't his doing. All these things happening, and we said that God did it. God took my mama. God took my daddy. Well, the only people I see God took was Enoch and Elijah. These two men never died, and they're still alive today, 6,000 years ago, and they're still alive, still alive. Okay, some people see the extreme of this, but they still mix it in when the conversation, when somebody dies, they say, well, it must be God's will. It's not God's will for anyone to die. Now, there's some people that needed to die, say like Adolf Hitler, Stalin, and all those people. We think, God, get rid of these folks. And now evangelical ministers are behind a man by the name of Trump after they've been calling Obama the Antichrist ever since he's been in office. But now they're behind Trump who is Antichrist, he's not the Antichrist because the church is still here. Okay, as long as the church is here, the Antichrist cannot come on the scene. We, the Holy Spirit and us, is the one that's holding the Antichrist back. He can't come till the Lord take us out, what is called a rapture. Now, I know you won't find that word in the Bible, but that's what it means, a snatching away. God will snatch his church out of this world and turn totally to the Jewish people. That's what's the next event going to be. No, neither God controls everything or he doesn't. It has to be one or the other, but not a combination of both. But, you know, I was thinking about something like with, with Job. God told Satan, don't kill him. 
Don't kill him. So God, to me, still has that ability to do those things. But there's a lot of things that God cannot do because God going to go beyond what he have told us not to do, such as divorcing your wife. He'll never divorce you. If you say God will never get rid of you, God said he's married to the backslider. So hang in there because God ain't let you go yet. That's of the devil, and that's the bottom line. The devil has the ability to kill, steal, and destroy, and that's what his goal is, to kill you, destroy you, whether it's by eating pork chops or ribs or by alcohol and drugs. That is his way to kill us, graveyard dead. And the Lord tells us we can eat anything, just pray on it. Pray over it and bless that food before you eat it. If you truly believe that God controls everything, when you get sick, why would you ever go to the doctor and try to get out of his will? Why would you ever take medicine to lessen the pain? And that's another dangerous thing that a lot of people are getting into, pain pills. They will kill you graveyard dead if you don't act right with it. When I got shot, I remember I was on a pain medication. And when my time was up for it, I hurt like crazy. And then I said, I'm, I'm addicted. I'm addicted. So I quit. I said, I got to quit. No matter how much this hurt, I got to quit. I don't want to be addicted to anything or anybody. And that's the way Christians are supposed to think, not to be addicted, to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Okay, Ephesians 3 and 20. Now unto him who is able exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. He's able to do all of this. God is able. He's able. But it's going to take faith to contact all of that. It's not going to work automatically. It takes faith to contact these things. God by grace has provided everything, but you have to complete freedom of choice as to whether his perfect will for you comes to pass or not. It doesn't happen without your cooperation. See, because God made us for this planet. See, you say that God took them. Well, God don't want to take you to heaven because that means that you have to come out of your body for God to take you. And you can't live on this earth without a body. You can't even talk to your friends without a body because you need a voice, you need a mouth, you need a tongue. All these things it take for you to live on this planet. And without a body, you cannot live here. Ephesians 3 and 20, according to the power that worketh in us, that Holy Spirit that's in us now, he's working it through us to help God with what are we doing. And so many people are afraid of the Holy Spirit, but he's the best friend we got. He is the only friend that we got because the devil don't like you, and he want to take you off this planet. His goal is to get you off this planet whatever way he can. Second Peter 3 and 9, the Lord is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God just needs you to repent and accept Jesus Christ, uh, confess that you are a sinner and you need salvation. Because Jesus said, no man can come unto the Father except by me. No man comes to the Father except by me. I know there's a lot of ways people talk about, but there's only one way. And that way is through the Lord Jesus Christ. God, by grace, have already provided salvation for the whole world. But you have to put faith in God's grace to see it come to pass. Matthew 7, 13 to 14. In a year at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many be there which go in and entreat. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. So you, I'm telling you how to find that gate. And that gate is Jesus Christ and him only. The Lord Jesus Christ clearly said that not everybody will be saved. Yet Second Peter reveals that it is God's will for everybody to be saved. Well, is there a difference between what Jesus is saying and what God the Father is saying? Jesus speaking as an Old Testament prophet. Now, remember this. Jesus was an Old Testament prophet. The New Testament do not start until we get into the book of Acts. And Acts is a history book. It's not a doctoral book. It is a history book. 
because I know many of you, I got saved in the church that believed in Jesus only. But that was not the correct doctrine. It is a good doctrine. It's a great doctrine. And what they're saying is true. But you need the doctrine, the, the, the living epistles that Paul wrote. All of those scriptures will tell you about grace. You need grace to, to make it in this world. You have a choice. God, by grace, have provided everything, but if you don't believe, you won't receive. Everything you need is right here inside of you right now. I know when I got saved in the church, Pentecostal churches, they said, well, my prayers didn't feel like I, I left the, 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 the ceiling. Well, that's as far as they need to go because God, Jesus Christ, lives in you. And Jesus Christ is king. He's king in heaven. And he's king on this earth. So if you get him, you got it all. People have taken the truth that God moves independently of us, not based on our performance and developing a teaching that is commonly called sovereignty of God. And everything becomes the sovereignty of God. But as I said earlier, God told the Satan not to kill Job. You could put those diseases on him. You could do a lot of things to him, but do not kill the man. And Satan backed up because Satan knew what would happen. The angels that had sex with women in chapter 6, they was put into a pit called Tartarus. Tartarus is a part of hell. When we see these words in the Bible, they all translated hell. But there are different areas of hell that people go into. Remember before Jesus came, the Jews went into a place called Abraham's bosom. Well, what was Abraham bosom at? It was in hell because Jesus had to die and all the things that he suffered, even being in hell for those three days and three nights, he had to suffer. Nobody could go to heaven. I told you about Enoch and Elijah who never died, but the Lord took them. Now, that they did, that he did do, but the Lord ain't taking your father, your grandfather, all those people. He's not doing that. Because God don't want anything to do with death. The Bible tells us blessed is those who die in the Lord from henceforth. So when you receive Jesus, blessed are you because you've gone to heaven. But you can't take your body to heaven with you. Your body go to the graveyard and it was decomposed because God can't do anything with it. Your body will do what it wants to do when it wants to do it. And that is the reason so many Christians get pulled back into the worldly things because their body wants to do what the body do. Basically, they are doing is overemphasizing grace. Theological terms for the tension between grace and faith is Calvinism versus Arminianism. Calvinism, Calvinism emphasized that everything is totally up to God. Arminism emphasized that you have a part to play. You can believe and receive or doubt and do without. You can control the measure of grace of God you experience by your faith. See, it takes faith to connect with grace. It, everything you want from God is going to take faith to get it. And whether you get it in this life or not, you will get it in the next life. And that's my answer for all the people that wondering, well, why ain't that happen? Don't worry about it. You'll get it. Ephesians, not, excuse me, not Ephesians, but the book of Hebrews tell us that in, the, I think it's the 11th chapter, that not everybody that was standing in faith received the promise. You might not receive your promise in this life, but when you die and go to heaven, you will receive it because the Lord is going to raise your body back up out of the cemetery or wherever it's at or whether it's been eaten up. The Lord bring everybody back and put them in their body. Even the unsaved folks will be put back in their body and stand before Jesus Christ to be judged someday. You that got relatives in hell, they have to stand before Jesus and explain or try to explain why they don't belong in hell. But religion has come along and said that sovereignty means God controls everything and that nothing can happen without his permission. That's not what the word of God teaches. God is not sovereign the way religion has taught it. This is a convenient theological thing they're doing. We cannot understand certain things, so it's easier to make statements such as this. People die all the time without being God's will. There are people in heaven now 
that they died too soon, but it's too late to do anything about it because when you're there, you're stuck. It's like a prison. That's what hell is called. It's called a prison because when you go to hell, you cannot come up. You cannot come out. You're locked in because, like I said, God don't want any spirits on this earth. The only spirits that's legal on this earth, and they're not really legal because they have angel and have human. The, the angels, the fallen angels that had sex with women in Genesis chapter 6, they're stuck here. And they want to get in you and pervert your lifestyle. People that's homosexual, et cetera, et cetera, it's a demon. Even alcoholism and drugism, it's, it's a demon spirit that has attached itself to you. <clears throat> so you have to be very careful with demons. People die all the way we read. Scripture makes it clear that Jesus came to destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. Hebrews 2 and 4. The power to take life. That is Satan who has that power. It's illegitimate because God said the last enemy he would destroy would be death. Right now you got to die. We have to die. I'm going to die. You're going to die. So make sure you get Jesus before that day comes. And don't be messing around because tomorrow is not promised to you. So accept Jesus today. Satan is one who goes about seeking whom he may devour. That's in 1 Peter 5 and 8, John 10 and 10. We started the corruption on this planet, meaning Adam and Eve did. God doesn't control all of those things. If God, <coughs> if God could have, he would have stopped Adam and Eve from eating of that tree. He wouldn't have allowed it, but he couldn't stop it. When Cain killed his brother, God couldn't stop it. That was the act of a man, just like God can't stop you from taking dope or whatever you might be doing, whatever vice you got, and we all got some type of vice. So we have to accept it and ask God to deliver us from it. And that is what we have to do because some things we done got ourselves into, we can't get out of it. So it's God's who will get us out. If we really believe that he controls every single thing that happens, then what's the point of us doing anything? Either God controls everything or he doesn't. Okay, let's move on a little further with this. His perfect will for us comes to pass or not. It doesn't happen without our cooperation. Uh, Ephesians 3 and 20. God cannot or we should say does not. See, this is the point with God. God is an everlasting God. God loves you very much. How can he put 2 Peter 3 and 9 and Matthew 7, 13 to 14 together and work for us? God's will does not automatically come to pass. God, by grace, has provided everything. If we don't believe, we won't receive. So you have to believe to receive from God. According to Hebrews 2 and 4, who has the power of death? That is Satan. Satan has the power of death right now. The last enemy God said he'll destroy is death. So that enemy has not been destroyed yet. 1 Peter 5 and 8 reveals that our adversary to be whom, uh, he, he, that is Satan. The adversary is Satan. As a roaring lion whom does not our adversary walk around seeking. He is trying to find somebody he can destroy. That's all he wants to do. God don't want you destroyed. God wants you to live in peace on this earth. <clears throat> but that's impossible because Satan is the God of this world. We talk about electing Save presidents. You'll never elect a saved president on this earth. Never. Every president we had was a Mason. And in case you don't, anything, don't know anything about Masonry, I'm going to teach on that one day. All of these false religions I'm going to teach about. And I know it's going to offend many people, but I got to do it. According to John 10 and 10, why does the thief come? The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy Jesus came that we might have what? Life and have life more abundantly. 
Adam and Eve was commanded in Genesis 2 and 17 not to eat of what tree? The tree of good and evil, Amen. more or less. So that is, we ate of the wrong tree. You know, that's, that's what happened. And it's, it's unfortunate that that happened. So I want to tell you about Jesus, who did everything he could to save you. The suffering on the cross, the, the hours he spent in the garden, trying to convince God, it, can we do it another way? He, he suffered for us. The pain, the suffering that he suffered on the cross, he did it for us. And then he went into hell itself to, for the sentence that we should have gotten because Jesus went to hell because that was Adam and Eve's punishment. That was your punishment and my punishment to go to hell for those two days and, th excuse me, three days and three nights. That was the punishment that we owe to God, and God wanted everything. God couldn't just forgive you like Lucy Lucy. He had, you, somebody had to pay for what you've done, for what I've done. And, you know, I didn't know why I did certain things till I really got to know my father. And my grandfather, I thought I knew him. There was things that they did in their life, and I found out that I would end up doing some of those same things. It's in the bloodline. I told the Lord once, I said, Lord, I don't drink. My kids drink. Yeah, but Charlie, it's in your blood. It's in the blood. It's all about the blood. That's how you get saved, by the blood of Jesus, by the life of Jesus. <clears throat> Everything. And I was taught that now my family did not, well, I should say my grandfather's side, did not accept God. He told me once that he tried to date a girl that had a buckboard, and she wouldn't have nothing to do with him because they didn't own a buckboard or something. Anyway, something silly like that can keep you out of, he out of heaven. And I don't want anybody to be out of heaven. So I want to tell you about Jesus. Jesus will get you there. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. He can take you there. He know the way. He came to earth, and he went to heaven, and nobody showed him the way. So when you hook up with him, he'll get you to heaven. He'll get you to the Father. Only way you can get to the Father is with Jesus Christ. So accept him and be satisfied with him and get to know him. Fellowship with him. That's why we get saved. Not with religion, but we have the fellowship with him. We're one with him. When the Holy Spirit baptized you into Christ, you became one with Jesus Christ. So you're connected with him. We are his body, and he is the head. So thank God, and thank God, and thank God once again. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You are saved if you do what I tell you to do. Confess Jesus as Lord. Shalom. Shalom. <clears throat>